Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living Loop 12.6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Today we're going to be decorating my front porch entryway for fall using items from the Dollar Tree as well as Walmart and some thrifted items. I'll have all of those DIYs from prior videos linked in the description box below. And today we'll be doing four Dollar Tree DIYs. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're going to be using this carpet mat that I got from the Dollar Tree, as well as this felt pumpkin that I'm going to be using as a template. And so I just took a felt pen and went through the openings of the pumpkin, and I'm going to paint that in using my acrylic and chalk paint custom orange color mixture that I made a few videos back. I chose this piece of carpeting because I thought it would be easier to paint since it's not a shag and so my paint might take it a little bit better. And so I'm just going to use my brush and paint in those open areas and I made sure to kind of wiggle my paintbrush so that it would get down in the nooks and crannies and really adhere to the carpet and into the fibers. So hopefully it'll keep its color for a long time. So after I got my pumpkin all painted, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't gonna fray from being walked on. And so I just pulled out a few layers of the strands or a few rows of the strands of carpeting and then left the underlying mesh material open at the end. So that just kind of gave it a frayed edge and it looked really cute. The two shorter sides don't seem to be wanting to come apart. So I hope that'll be okay. So now I'm gonna take a black Sharpie and just write in welcome to our patch. And this is just so that I can make sure I get the spacing right to fill in my words when I go over it with my Apple Barrel acrylic black paint and give it the same finish as my pumpkin. And here it is all finished and I think this turned out so cutie patootie but I'll show you guys everything how it comes together at the end of this video. So for our next project I'm going to be using two of these yard stake signs the metal one and a wood one and I'm going to take off the metal leaf from the metal sign and as cute as it is I just didn't like the dots or the spots around the edges. So then I'm also going to take the arrow and be using that to add to this little sign. So I'm just going to sand off the glitter and I'll eventually paint this. This will be the back and I'm going to sand the back, which is going to be our front, so that I can get a smooth finish for when I paint my words on it. So now I'm going to paint the outside frame of my pumpkin and I'm using a paint mixture that I made a few videos back using some bright yellow Ceram Coat acrylic paint from Delta and I added some crimson chalk paint from Waverly to get this really pretty orange and it's the same orange that we used in our doormat. So I'm going to cover up those spots and then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in moss to kind of match our little bicycle on here and paint my arrow and my metal leaf. Mm -hmm. 
So now to embellish my sign, I'm going to be using some black and white buffalo check ribbon, some burlap ribbon, a burlap leaf, some pip berry garland, and those are all from Dollar Tree. And then I started using some deco mesh that I got from Walmart, but I end up taking that out in the end. So I'm just going to make my scrappy bow and I'm going to layer on a couple of the strips of the buffalo check and then the burlap and just layer those on top of each other. And then using my Pitberry Garland, I'm going to use that as my chenille stem and just wrap it around and twist it in the back and get that all together. And then I'm going to dovetail the ends so that it's all nice and cute. And like I said, you could leave the deco mesh in there. I just decided it was too much and so I end up pulling it out at the end. But you guys know I change my mind quite a bit. I will also change my mind on the placement of this bow too. <laughs> So first I put it at the top of my pumpkin, but I decided to change it a little later because I really like to see the stems of the pumpkins, but you couldn't see it, it was covered all up. So I'll change that a little bit later as we get closer. So now I'm gonna take my Bistro Chalk Marker in black and I get this from Walmart. You can get all kinds of different colors. I get a lot of questions about this pen. And so I'm just gonna write pumpkins 25 cents and then I'll attach that to the bottom of my sign using some hot glue and then a little teeny piece of burlap to cover that up. And then I'm going to go back in with my moss chalk paint and cover the entire thing, burlap and all. So here's where I decided to change the position of my little scrappy bow and then for the top I just decided to use the burlap leaf and wrap that around there with some jute twine and then tie a sweet little bow and then on top of my scrappy bow I'm going to pull out that deco mesh and just add some loops of some jute twine to make another little bow that is a little more full and doesn't cover as much and I just liked it a little bit better. And then I'm going to take my metal leaf and attach that to the top of my burlap leaf. And here it is all finished and I think this turned out so sweet and again I'll show this to you at the end and I can't wait till you see it it's so cute so now for our next project I'm gonna be using two of these bunches of allium bushes from Walmart and I get these for 347 two embroidery hoops and some buffalo check ribbon and so I'm just gonna cut these bushes apart at each of the stems and tighten up my embroidery hoop and then I'm just gonna stack half on one side and half on the other and tie them in the middle with some jute twine. Now my friend had given me a whole bunch of embroidery hoops and this is a 12 inch embroidery hoop but you can get them at Hobby Lobby for $1.57 when you use your 40% coupon. Otherwise you can buy them on Amazon and they'll be just a little over $2 each. So because we have double doors, I'm making two of these wreaths, but it was a little hard to see the wooden hoop in the color that it is. So after I put it all together, I'm gonna take it apart and then paint my hoops in black. So now to make the bows for the middle of my flowers, I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm gonna go up about two inches and twist it and put it between my thumb and my forefinger. And then I'll make a small loop and then twist it again and hold it in the same place. And then I'll make another loop that's a little bit larger and they're gonna keep getting larger as we go out. So the very first loop is gonna be our middle one and then we're starting to make those loops gradually larger and larger. 
and then I'll just keep twisting and holding until I get to the end. And you wanna have the same number of loops on each side and then the one in the middle. So you'll always end up with an odd number of loops. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna take that middle loop where you first started and flip it over onto itself so that it's upside down and then you'll take a chenille stem and stick it through that loop and twist it in the back and then foof out your loops. And then you'll dovetail that end and you have a cute perky little bow. And then I'm gonna take the ends of that chenille stem and use that to attach it to the bottom of my wreath. So once I got them all put back together, I'm gonna to use some more buffalo check ribbon to hang them from the door and used my Michael J to take thumbtacks and tack the ribbon into the very top of the door and made sure that they were hanging at the same height. And I think they turned out super, super cutie patootie and only took me about five minutes each. So now for our final project, I'm gonna be using some more buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree some burlap and deco mesh from Walmart, some Dollar Tree fall leaf garland, and some tan colored chenille stems. And then to hang what will become our door garland, I'm gonna be using a lot of command hooks. So the first thing I did was rolled out my burlap, and this is going to be the entire length of our garland. And I believe this is 15 feet long and it's eight inches wide. And then the orange burlap is five and a half inches wide. And I had used some of that, so I didn't have a complete run of the entire garland. So I just did it in the middle and then it'll just stop whenever it stops. So now I'm gonna put my deco mesh on top of all of that. I'm gonna end up switching it around so that my orange is on top of the green, but then I'm just gonna take my chenille stems and every so often I'm just gonna gather and scrunch it together and then wrap my chenille stem around that. And I wrap my chenille stems so that they end on the top so that I can add additional items to my garland. So now I'm gonna use my fall leaf garland from the Dollar Tree and I ended up using about five of these and I'm just gonna take the open ends of my chenille stems and tuck that inside there and twist it on to add it to my garland. I've learned to really be mindful of the color choices I make for my florals and leaves. So as you can see here, these have more of the greens and the yellows and pretty soft oranges instead of the super bright reds and yellows. So now I'm gonna take my buffalo check ribbon and do the same thing and just add that throughout. And I kind of like it to get flowy and twisted and just let it kind of do its own thing. So now I'm gonna take some of these jack-o'-lantern pumpkins and I don't wanna see their faces, sorry guys. So I'm gonna turn them so that the faces are facing the garland and you don't see them. So I'm just taking a large eyed needle and I'm placing some chenille stem in there just like you would some thread. And then I'm gonna poke it in through the front part of the pumpkin and then push it down on my self healing mat so that the needle pops out the other side. And then I'll take my pliers and pull it all the way through about halfway. And then I'll attach that to my scrunchy sections of my garland. Thank you. 
So I'm not gonna be hanging this until the next day, but I wanted to just kind of get it poofed and ready to go. And you'll be poofing the whole time until after it's actually all the way hung. So I'm just pulling in and out my ribbon and my burlap and making them go in alternating patterns so that it's all nice and poofed and cutie patootie. And then I'm gonna take some raffia, and I'm really running low on this, so I didn't have a whole bunch, but I'm just gonna go over and make a messy little bow and then attach that to my chenille stem for the final touch. And then I'll wrap my chenille stem around it, and then I just made some curly cues to kind of resemble some tendrils, and then it's done. Now, if you're still watching and you're liking what you see, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up and the bell notification because YouTube really likes that and they'll recommend my video more often the more numbers we get. So here it is ready and waiting to be hung up in the morning. And anytime I do a door garland, I love when it's out on my island because you could actually use this as a table runner or an island runner or a mantelpiece. This can be used for so many things and I just love how it's turned out just sitting here on my island. So now it's time to install everything and I'm using command hooks and I used about seven of these plus some little ones just to make everything stay in place and you just remove the adhesive and attach it to the hook and then you're going to take off the other side and attach it to your surface and you want to wait for a little while before putting anything on it so that it's nice and adhered and has a really strong hold. So after waiting about 10 minutes, I'm going to start attaching my garland to these hooks and I'm using the chenille stems in the back and just wrapping those around to make a little loop and then I'll hang it on there and then just move on to the next one. If your chenille stem doesn't quite meet where you put your hooks, you could either wait to put your hooks on until you know where those pieces are gonna go or you can just attach it to the burlap that has lots of holes and lots of places to attach it to your doorway. So I wanted this garland to be asymmetrical because I have a long sign that's gonna go on the right hand side. So I wanted the majority of it to be on the left side because that's the side that we use to go into the door. So I couldn't really put much on that side in the way of any decor or anything like that so that it wouldn't block the door opening. And then I also like to wait until the very last minute to cut off any excess ribbons or bows, or in this case, mesh. And then I'm just gonna dovetail those and tuck it all in. And then I found this sign in my stash that says gather together. I got this from Ross a while back. It was $5.99. So I just added some command strip sticky parts and I'm gonna attach that to the top part of our window. So now I'm gonna place my so very thankful sign that I made in a prior DIY as well as this pumpkin stand and then a pumpkin from Walmart. And then I'm gonna add my Buffalo check doormat, which I got from Kai Sin Pro. And then I have Michael J bringing out this beautiful pumpkin topiary. And I have a hard time trying to decide which place I want it in. And so he's always the trooper and just follows my pointy finger. So then I'll add my wreaths and my doormat. And then I have some hay from Walmart. And then I'll add a couple more pumpkins from Walmart and then my little metal pumpkin sign and it's all finished. And here it is all together and I am just so in love with how it turned out and we are officially ready for fall. I really love all of these colors and it's just enough. It's not too bright, but at the same time, it's really eye catching and it wasn't really that hard either. I am a little sore from going up and down the ladder, but sometimes we just got to take one for the team. I'll have all of the videos listed in the description box below for the other DIYs that you see here, but I love how this turned out and I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects and if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. Don't forget about our weekly prayer posts that you'll find in my community tab. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.